then comes the maps who will tell me what are integration maps anyone it's the value what you have in the system to mapping to the file like if you're if right. you're transferring data to another um, entity like to mm -hmm. mastercard or uh, other companies you know you're mapping mm -hmm. the data basically what you have and how they store the information in the system right yeah so for example gender right like if i see if there is any gender configured here right female right so the internal value is what workday has so i have male what is the external value say the other system wants m then i will say female female is what f similarly is the title like say if workday value is of us it is doctor so i want d to be there right if it is something else so why workday has provided workday knows these are the very commonly used things so instead of if workday doesn't provide then you have to write a code for this right if an else statement if gender is female then value should be f else m something like that so that's why to remove that stuff workday has provided this configuration as a configurable value right on the front end so you don't have to go to the code and do that right similarly for marital status you have all single you want to send s for separated you want to say se partners so it will be part of the specification which you will get from the vendor same is with region ethnicity you don't have to configure everything only what is applicable to your requirement you do that yep but the things which are not there and you want to map them then for that there will be an extra code right and that code will come as part of our next integration type which we will see okay so this was the map again it is the same stuff why is this error it is saying instance plural specified for parameter is required and must have a value which one and do i have it here that's it okay now so we have done the attributes and the maps and the service but then how will we select what fields will be there in the output file right because what we are doing as part of this connector the core connector worker it generates it's an outbound connector meaning it will extract data from both there and it will generate a file which you can send to any other system so that means there should be an option to select what values or what fields right we want to send for that you go to integration system configure integration field attributes okay now here if you click that it opens up a page like this right on the left hand side you have all the services which you have enabled right like the personal data section status data section position data contract data and all so now what we'll do is we'll go one by one so worker profile nothing here personal data right now you see here legal name so include in the output file it is by default enabled preferred name is enabled name data is enabled now do you want gender in the file yes i do want do you want birth date yes i want it. then i want marital status i don't want religion i don't want anything else okay now i go to the next section which is status data i want the hire date i want there should be a termination date as well here if an employee termination date and all that staffing event this one event status so whatever whatever you are selecting is again 
all dependent on the requirement right position now why i have enabled all the services because say i am a new person i don't know which service has what fields right but they work they has kind of clubbed it so if you see contract data it will have all contract related fields position id contract id contract type and all that then leave of absence on leave leave start date and all that all the fields associated with that national id you have all the ids visa passport license other related and and all that so, right personal data again it is a separate section it was there in the beginning but there the name was different it was worker personal data now this is worker again personal data section so your wish whatever you want to select it will come up okay transaction log let me enable this fine and okay so meaning configure integration field attributes helps you in selecting the fields which you want in the output of this connector right once you do that right so now whatever fields you have selected and if you run the integration if there are any changes on those fields that particular employee will be in the output file okay so now we have done attributes we have done field attributes now comes the maps is done and all that stuff now we will see the override first let me make it done okay con in this i n t s okay now let me again go to the so you saw configure integration field attribute was the place where you kind of select your fields which you want in the output now say there is some requirement that there are some fields which might not be delivered okay for example say the same thing employee id is there but you want only the first two characters of the employee id right or you want to concatenate two ids and that you have to send right so those if you remember our initial last week that was the thing which we did using the calculated fields right so now that's where the calculated fields will come into picture so what we'll do is since those fields are not available right those are not work day delivered fields and all that what we do is we do configure integration services right and here you have custom integration service right because those fields are not part of the work day delivered services so what we do is we create an integration custom integration service right so you say create and then you choose the field override field override service and then you give a name right int whatever test field override now the business object so again now this is again back to our basic whatever business object we will choose here the calculated field which we will be configuring right so we need to make sure whatever data or business object is here the calculated fields should be on the same business object right generally what we do is we have always seen using worker and you give the name of the field this is not the name of the calculated field this is just the placeholder right so i say first two digits 
of employee ID, right? This is the name of the field. I am just giving this, but you can keep anything, right? Just random. And then you can give her another custom field, something like that, right? This is just a placeholder and you click on OK and done. Okay. So when you do this custom integration service, what we have done is we have just defined the name and two fields. Again, the name of the two fields that these two fields have to be configured. Now where we will go and do that is configure integration field overrides. Right. So here you see this INT test field override. This is the one which we created, right? The first two digits of employee ID and the custom field. So now here you have a drop down. Once you create your calculated field, it will come. I think our something, some calculated field will be there, which we have created should be there, right? So we will choose whatever. Okay, so this is the place where you do this field override. Now comes the this first part here, which is define the eligibility criteria. And you read the description here, which says used to determine whether a worker is eligible for inclusion in the integration output. The field should return a Boolean value. So that means it has to be a true false field. Either it can be delivered or it can be a calculated field, right? So if it's delivered, there is a field called is active. Is active employee. And if you click on these three dots, it says. Is this employee active or an employee? Right. Again, is active manager and all that stuff. If there is no condition. Right now, I'm giving you a practical example here. So there can be three types of things. One is that there is no condition at all, right? You need to choose everything with whatever is there in your tenant, be it active, inactive or things. So in that case, since there is no condition, you can leave it blank or you can say any is true. Any is true means I don't care, right? Returns Boolean true always. It gives you true always. And it's made on global business object and it's work rate delivered. Okay, so this is the first. Second is you want only active employees, right? So you choose is active, is active employee. Right? And third is our custom where we say it is based on some location. Right? So let me do this. I will make Create a, let's create a calculated field with some condition and a practical condition is that employees work location is some stuff right based on the location. So let's do what's the task create calculated field. Now what will be the business object? Let me say it eligibility. Yes, what will be the business object? Hello. Is Did you worker? say something? Worker. Yes. Why worker? Because you see here business object. It is saying either integration system should be your business object or the worker should be a business object. Meaning any calculated field which is using these two business object will be available here. So for us, it is let's say worker. A function. What will be the function? Right. Okay. So this one now condition. So let's say worker country. Is that something? Worker country or yes. Australia worker country. So they have there is already a field like this. Okay, so let me put it as worker country. Okay. 
Poland, Norway, Italy, Hong Kong, okay. Australia. Equal to true, right? So local country is Australia. So that means what is this checking? Whether the worker country is Australia. If yes, it will return true. Now, if you have to use it here, I will just copy paste the name and then it should be available here. Okay, so our eligibility criteria is set. Then is this CCW workers for DIS? There is nothing to be done here. It's all like that. Leave it. Okay, then one more configuration is the transaction log, which I told you, right? Here is this part. We saw that worker integration, this core connector worker checks the transaction log. So one thing is we can subscribe to a specific transaction as well, right? Very important concept. Say the requirement, the vendor says, you need to send me every time the employee which is hired. I don't want any terminations, promotion, demotion, compensation change, nothing like that. Only when there is a new hire, you send me that employee, right? So that means it is a very particular type of transaction on which we need to send data, right? So what we do is we come here by default, the value subscribe to all transaction type, meaning anything happening is eligible for this integration. But if there is a very specific requirement, we override this default and we say subscribe to a specific transaction type, which is higher. Okay, higher. And then later on the, system, the other system says, so you send me higher and termination both. So then you choose termination right so now whenever these two things will happen on any employer that particular employee will be in the output file right other options are subscribe to this then a subscribe to business process except so whatever you will write except that everything will be in store similar to that you have transaction type and all Clear? Any questions? No. 